الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من أطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد مهتدى ومن يعصيه ما فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا وسيجزي الله الشاكرين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعيدة من أيام أخرى يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما حداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي ما دعاك قد يستجيبوا لي ويؤمنوا بي لعلهم يشكرون رحمة الله العظيم My respected brothers and sisters We are at most three days away from the month of Ramadan and Mubarak Insha'Allah, we will be offering Salat al-Tarawih on July 8th, which is going to be Monday night. And our first day of fasting is going to be July 9th, Tuesday, insha'Allah, in the place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope and pray that all of us are ready for this blessed month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I also want to advise my community not to get into the issues of coinciding calculations because we have discussed these issues so many times and by now those brothers and sisters who wanted to make their mind about calculation they have already made up their mind and those who are still not convinced about calculation and they want to go with their actual coinciding they are not going to change their mind. So we should not worry about what the others are doing. And we should not make it a point of dispute in the beginning of the month of Ramadan. Let those who feel comfortable with calculation be comfortable. And let those who want to follow the moon signing follow the moon signing. And also I want to educate my community there might be a confusion this year. There is a real possibility that moon may not be sighted in Saudi Arabia or in the Middle East countries. The reason is that the moon will be born on 8th of July, June Monday, at 10.15 a.m. Makata, which is going to be almost 2 14 or 15 a.m. our time. And the moon is going to be setting at 7 or 8 or 8, while the sun in Makkah will be setting at 8 or 7, which means that the moon will stay only one minute after the sunset in Makkah. And one minute is not sufficient for it to be sighted. It might be sighted any other place other than Makkah. Because usually it takes between 15 to 30 minutes for the moon. If it stays after the sunset, it will be seen. But if it does not stay that much time, it may not be possible. So there's a possibility that in Saudi Arabia or in the Gulf country, they may not make the announcement for Tuesday. And the Sultan of Oman has already made the announcement that based upon calculations, 
they will be observing the fasting on Wednesday and not on Tuesday. So most of the previous years, Alhamdulillah, our calculations and Saudi as MashaAllah, Rubia have been coincided, so we did not have much problem. But very often, whenever we do not hear the exciting news from Saudi Arabia or the Gulf countries, many of the brothers and sisters feel uncomfortable. So there are a lot of questions. I want to clarify that my brothers and sisters remember that by the time the moon will arrive here in the United States of America, its age code is going to be between 18 hours to 19 hours. And by the time it will reach the West Coast in California, it will be almost 21 to 22 hours. And by the time it reaches to Alaska and Hawaii, its age is going to be almost 24 hours. So because we share the night, we share the horizon or the matla with West Coast or with Hawaii. So therefore, even if you do not go with calculation, you know that the moon is in the horizon and somewhere in the place where you share the night with them, whether in West Coast or in Hawaii, it will be seen. Because by the time it reaches the West Coast or Hawaii, it will be 22 to 24 hours of day. So therefore, just look at it from that perspective that if you are living in a city and from the next city, the news came at 1 o'clock that the moon has been sighted, the authorities, they used to make the announcement that we are going to start fasting tomorrow. So in the same fashion, we know that somewhere where we share the night, that moon is definitely going to be sighted. So even if you do not go with the calculation, inshallah, with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Tuesday should be the first day of Ramadan. And as I have mentioned, we should not say anything against those brothers and sisters who may not observe the fasting on Tuesday. You know the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet alayhi sallam, alayhi sallam, after the battle of Confederates, he asked some of the Sahaba, that you should not say Salatul Asr until you reach the quarters of the Quraysha. You know the famous hadith. Some of them, they insisted not to do Salat al-Asr until they reach the quarters of the Banu Quraysh because this was the clear-cut statement and the commandment of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. While the others insisted, they said, the Prophet meant that you should go fast, walk fast and should not stop on the way and reach before Salat al-Asr ends, you must reach at Banu Quraysh's quarters. And they actually struggled with each other, fought with each other. One who blamed the other, one of them, they said, how can you violate the Salah? In the Salah, the Kamatal and Mughlini and Vidabam, Mahmoda. There is specified time for Salah al You cannot violate that time. You have to say, even if you do not eat, Banu Quraysh. And the others, they said, there is a clear cut statement from Rasulullah Sallallahu that you must not do the salah until you reach the Quraysh. So how could you violate the text of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the commandment of Rasulullah sallam? So after they fought, after they fought with each other, they came back to Rasulullah sallam and a group complained to Rasulullah sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not basically punish or admonish any of them. He said, go oh, and think about right. What was he trying to say? that this group's intention was to follow the text of the Qur'an and they listened to my statement and they took it as what is the philosophy behind it, what is the objective of Rasulullah They did not go to the literal words and they offered Salat al-Asr before they reached Banu Quraysa. They also followed the Sunnah or they also followed the objectives of Islamic Sharia. And those who followed my words literally, their intention was not to violate the Salat al asr but their intention was to obey, to obey my commandment, so the Prophet did not admonish any of them. So I strongly recommend to my brothers and sisters 
that instead of looking at who starts on Tuesday and who starts on Wednesday, let us focus upon the objectives of the fasting and the month of Ramadan al mubarak If you know the famous hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the Sahabi, he comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Murri bi amalin yukhiru al jannah Command me to do something which will guarantee me the Jannah. The Prophet of Islam said, Ali al Siyam, the Inna Hu You should fast because there is no, no action of a human being which can come closer to the Salah of fasting. The person asked Rasulullah again, Ya Rasulullah, anything else? The Prophet of Islam said, Ali al Siyam. You should fast. Why, my brothers and sisters, fasting is among the three fundamentals of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said, Tabaadu Islam in Alayhinna Ustisa Islam. The fundamentals, the foundational stones of Islam are three. And Islam is based upon Shahadat of Allah ilaha illallah, the Salat al Makhluba, the Siyam al Madan. First is, the Tawheed, the Shahada, that there is no God other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the five times daily prayers. And then fasting the month of Ramadan. Imagine, the others are very important too. But these are the elements which are basically so fundamental to Islam that if somehow a Muslim just takes care of these basics, maybe the person is not wealthy enough to give zakat. Maybe he or she is not wealthy enough to go to perform hajj. But this is shahab and five times daily prayer and fasting the month of Ramadan is obligatory upon every individual. So here Alhamdulillah we are standing at the doors of Ramadan and here is the opportunity for us to reflect upon these three courses, the foundations of Islam and where do we stand from them? You know the authentic hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which has been cited by Al-Bukhari, Muslim and so many other books of hadith. You know, Every action a Muslim or a human being does is for him or for herself. It could be for his popularity, it could be for the sake of money, it could be for the sake of Allah, it could be for so many reasons. In the Siya, except fasting. For in the Huni, fasting is only and only for me. Wa ana ajzibihi, and I am the only one who will reward the person on behalf of his acts of fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this Kadish Kursi explains that fasting is the source of human sincerity. Fasting is the source of self-purification. Fasting is the source of ikhlas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing the things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guaranteeing that fasting is only and only for me and there is no reward which can be determined by the angels by the prophets or by anybody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. My servant, you did it for me, you pleased me, and today I am going to please you. Actually the Prophet Alayhi said, that the person who is observing the fasting gets two kinds of special pleasures and happiness. One is that when a person after the whole day of hunger and thirst MashaAllah breaks the fast. Now, a person knows I was hungry and thirsty, and I did it only and only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, the person is hungry and thirsty. When you drink water or milk, or when you eat dung, or when you eat something, after the whole days of hunger and thirst, it makes a lot more sense. You truly are very happy. We are looking forward for that time when we can break the fact. And second is in the Mayat Tirapa. And second happiness is going to be when that person is going to be his or her Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say, My servant, you kept yourself hungry and thirsty for my sake. 
Now, there is no hunger from now on. There is no thirst from now on. Go into Gentile. And from now on, you will never have this sense of hunger or thirst for enemy. You please me, and I will please you as you please me. And actually, the Hadith is in the Jannah, the Qarada al that in Jannah, people are going to be going from different doors. One of the other Hadiths of Rasulullah says that some of the people will be gone from the Bab of Salah. The people who were very much focused upon Salah. The door which is specified for the people of Salah will call them. O Yudha Rusalli, come through me. Those people who were Sahi, Asriya, you know, the, the, the people who give the Diviya for the Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And give Allah. So then those people will be going through the door of generosity. And the people of Hajj, the people of Jihad. But then there is a door which is only meant for the people who observe the fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And over there the angels and the door will be calling upon in the Sahih. Where are the people who use to fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the Prophet said, when the last person of fasting will enter that door, that door will be shut closed. So imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put so much in demand, so much efforts and so much attention to this act of fasting. And here, here we are, mashallah, given the opportunity to come very close to this month. As you know the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu also, and also it is mentioned in the Quran, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put revealed the Quran in Layla Tukat, in the Anjanam, fi Layla Tukat, in the Anjanam, in the in that night, the decisions of next year are made. Last year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the decision that some of the people are going to go back to him before next day of the Qadr, before next Ramadan. And all of us we know, somebody who has gone by. I know a person who just died yesterday, subhanAllah, just died yesterday. And here we are just three days before Ramadan. So who knows whether this is going to be our last Ramadan or this may not be Ramadan. So start making the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet used to say that Ya Allah put the baraka in my time and make me reach the month of Ramadan. Because once you reach the month of Ramadan and you start observing the fasting with proper sense of Iman and with proper sense of sincerity, then there is every opportunity for us to be forgiven. When some are not at the end of the episode, the offer of the moon is not a good thing. The person who observes the fasting of the month of Ramadan with true sincerity, sincerity comes out of it forgiven. There are so many things which we will be talking about Ramadan, inshallah, during the next, next hotel. And also, Sheikh Ziyad will be having his it is Yam class on Saturdays after Zohar, and I'll be having it on Sundays after Zohar. But let me say a few things which are very common, but which are also misunderstood by many of the brothers and sisters. Some of the Sunan, which are common, but not many people understand the Baraka about them. Number one is Soho. Because we will be fasting 16 days, and then after Salat Taran, getting home by 1 o'clock, many of you very tired, you will see and you will say, I'll wake up at 6 o'clock or whatever is the last minute of Salat al Fajr and I will not eat so good. And second thing is also there is a lot of confusion about different kinds of calories. There is a difference between some of them about 10 to 15 minutes. So people keep on asking, which calendar should I go by? So I'm going to explain a little bit. My brother and sisters, I know Ramadan is not going to be something easy. It's jihad. So if you can try your best to wake up even for one minute or two minutes and just drink some water or a cup of milk, you will fulfill your soul. And when the Prophet said in the Suhoor Barak that in taking something at the time of Suhoor is Barak, Allah, it will make it far easier for you than anything else if you follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah and start your day with it. Second issue is 
and many of the brothers and sisters asked this question toward the Maidah of Ramadan, that we found the calendar of ISM or some of the other calendars. But there are other calendars coming, coming from Chicago or New York. We are doing a difference of five to ten minutes. I'll explain to you the difference is in the way we call Surah Hazarik and Surah Hazarik. Some of the schools of thought, they believe that 15 Daraja is where the Sufi Sadi comes, the true morning stars. And there are some schools which believe that it's not 15 Daraja, it's the 18 angle. When the horizon is by 18 Daraja, this is the beginning of Fajr. And the reason is that, you know, there is so much dust in the space, so when the first light comes, some of those particles of sand which are in the space, they reflect the light of the sun and that light comes to the earth, but that's not the permanent light of the sun. As soon as those reflections change, that light starts to come to the earth. That's why it's called Sukhokal. That's, that's not truly really the morning. That is the deceiving morning. So the morning comes after that when the light comes towards the horizon and that light does not disappear. So that's where there's a difference of opinion between Omar Torah calendar and between what we follow here in the United States of America and Canada. We follow the 18 Daraja. Omar Torah follows 18 Daraja. But my brothers and sisters, I can tell you, let's not make a big deal. Even if you start eating 10 minutes ahead of time, it will not make much difference. And if you start eating 10 minutes after the time which we have said to you, and remember one thing, I'm saying you follow that calendar. You are still within that Hadith of Rasulullah in which he says Rasulullah that don't start eating by the Adhan of Dina. Start eating by the Adhan of Ibn 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 And I'm sure there was a little bit of difference between the Azar of Bilalati of Allah and the Azar of Umm Maktoum Rabbi Allah Ta'ala So three, four, five minutes difference at the time of eating is not a big deal. So therefore, I will not cause too much fitna about it. Just choose whatever you want to and stick to it and do not just compromise today here, tomorrow here. And even if one day you got late and you woke up late, and there are still 10 minutes left because of the second calendar. You can eat and you can start your fast. And also, I can tell you, a lot of times, this kind of meticulous following of every minute was not available at the time of Rasulullah. So you woke up. And ISM calendar said that, for instance, for instance, 336 is the last minute of himself. You woke up. Now, basically, 336. Yeah, the, you can still go have a cup of you know, milk or water. One, two, three minutes will not make a difference. I am of the opinion that at the time of Sahaba and Ramadan at night, in the desert, they were not following everything on milk. So there was going to be a difference of one, two, three minutes. So one, two, three minutes will not be your fast. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make your Allah with Kumul Yusuf, but I will make your Kumul Yusuf. He does not want to make your life visible exactly by the time of that, you know, such and such. So if one time or two times you woke up late, there's not much problem, you can, inshallah, have a cup of tea, not a cup of tea, but if you do not, you know, a cup of milk or water, and you can start your fasting, inshallah. We'll continue the discussion in the coming Jumah. Akunu Gaudi Allah, wa astagfirullah, 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 wa astagfirull